This is the Stephanie Miller Show. Mama is still on vacation. Chris Traps filling in. We've got Carl Frisch in studio with us. Uh, something I don't usually do when Stephanie is not here is I don't scream at myself, get me Glenn Kirshner. But with all of the news that was breaking yesterday, I felt like I needed to get me some Glenn Kirshner in here. Yep. So uh, here we go. Let's let's jingle him in. Thank God, former U.S. Attorney Glenn Kirshner is here. Get me Glenn Kirshner. Glenn Kirshner. Former 30-year federal prosecutor Glenn Kirshner. I can listen to him talk all day. Who has answered the call for his country once again. Glenn Kirshner. MSNBC legal analyst Glenn Kirshner. On the Stephanie Miller Show all day. Piercing blue-eyed. Glenn Kirshner. We got that Glenn Kirshner now and I feel okay. <laughs> all right. Hi, Glenn. Travis, you just jingled me in. Is I, that what I heard you I, say? I just jingled you in. Actually, Chris Ooh, jingled you in. Yes, yeah. Chris jingled you in. I just Chris asked for. Jingle. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome, Glenn. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I like I said, I don't usually uh, bring in our, our big guns like you, but on a day like today, I felt like it was important that we had you um, on yeah. the show because uh, there was so much breaking news between um, indictments, uh, Bill Cosby, uh, so some, some pre -court, Supreme Court rulings. But um, first things first, obviously, the big story yesterday was um, the indictment of Alan Weiselberg. And the Trump Organization. I think that's important that we include the Trump Organization because that could cause a lot of trouble for them as a as a company. Correct? Yeah, uh, it, it actually was a big deal. Unlike what some of the Trump lawyers were trying to sell on the courthouse steps yesterday, yeah. after Weisselberg was arraigned on the indictment, this is not small potatoes. This is not about fringe benefits. This is about sixteen years in Weisselberg. I got to tell you. I don't think Alan Weisselberg wants to go to prison. Mm -hmm. I don't think he wants the DA to continue to hound his sons, both of whom are in Donald Trump's business yep. orbit. And I know it's a long-term relationship and Donald Trump is his man and he's standing by his man. I still think now that he sees his name and lights as the mark he defended in a criminal indictment, he has to seriously consider walking away from Trump. One thing I noticed yesterday, um, Eric was on, um, no, I'm sorry, Don Jr. was on with Jesse Waters on Fox News, and they were kind of like mocking this thing. Is this all they've got? Is this all they've got? You know, a, 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 a $1.5 million over the course of 15 years, that's $100,000 a year. That's that's pennies to us. That's That to me is insulting to the average American right. who pays taxes. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that, I, I want that clip play more and more and more to remind people that this is how they feel about their supporters and their voters and just the average person who does not make over a hundred thousand dollars a year in untaxed income because right. that's a that's a big deal oh they think they're entitled to a little bit of lawlessness mm -hmm. right yeah. they, they they really they really feel like the laws don't apply to them and i saw that that clip with don jr and he just comes right out and says it it's like listen we work hard. We're entitled to steal some money from the oh taxpayers. That's his attitude. Right. And and running with that, it seems to me if 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 Alan Weiselberg got one point seven million dollars in these non tax um, fringe benefits, whatever you want to call them, um, I would I would assume that Junior and Eric and Ivanka and Don, Donald Trump himself probably got more than one point seven million dollars um, in, in benefits, wouldn't you say? Of course, that's why this is only, you know, round one or the starter's pistol in what will be a series of indictments against others. They're not going to stop with Weisselberg. And when I hear, Travis, people use the word, and I've used it, the term fringe benefits. Mm -hmm. A fringe benefit is when your boss maybe gives you a good case of liquor over the holidays right. as yes. a thank you, yeah. or maybe lets you use the corporate condo in Florida for a week without paying for it. Weisselberg got corrupt money to the tune of three hundred and sixty thousand dollars to put his grandkids in private school weisselberg and his wife got 200k in corrupt money to ride around in mercedes these are not fringe benefits right. this is theft this is grand larceny yeah. that's what this is his attorneys can try to sell it like fringe benefits that's not what we're dealing with here. Yeah, the average person doesn't get those types of benefits, like you said, and it's it's um, 
it's it's insane. Now, do, you also uh, said that you you were speculating that the unindicted co-conspirator number one was um, the controller for the company, the controller, or the controller. I, I think and, so. And CNN's reporting that, correct? CNN said they have teased it out, and uh, uh, I know first Tom Winter from NBC said he could report that individual one is not Donald Trump. I saw and that. And then CNN added on that reporting by saying it looks like it is um, Jeffrey McConney. Who's Jeffrey McConney? He's the controller of the organization. He's just one level down below Alan Weisselberg. So he probably also knows where many of the financial bodies are buried. And I bet he gave up Weisselberg. Here's why I say that. McConney went into the New York grand jury and testified. I was going to ask that. What does that. that mean? That means under New York law, he automatically gets immunity. It's a strange rule they have, but anybody who sets foot in a New York grand jury gets immunity and the statement can't be used against them. Okay. So he, I'm sure, laid out all of the crime and corruption that he knew about as the controller of the Trump organization. That's why, assuming he was part of it and he's gotten immunity so he can't be prosecuted, but it feels like he may be part of it. That's why they would have designated him as unindicted co-conspirator number one. That we have that on CNN's reporting, but that's kind of the only place that we have that. That hasn't been officially announced by the district attorney's office. Okay. Um, and then, uh, sorry, I'm trying to gather my thoughts here on this one. Um, there, there are other things that people have been talking about, people have been speculating about, that um, we might, um, this could be, for example, um, people thought it was going to be insurance fraud and the the devaluation of property and all of that uh do you think we're going to see charges like that coming through oh sure that's coming michael cohen put us on point about that a long time ago insurance fraud banking fraud um you know playing with the value of your assets you know inflating them for certain purposes deflating them mm -hmm. for others that's just those are just creative ways to steal others money yeah so i think they're frankly probably still pouring through the eight years of tax returns and financial documents that they got courtesy of two trips to the Supreme Court. They finally got it. I think these were the easy charges to. Investigating yeah. and we're probably going to see more criminal charges about those exact things. I'm kind of hoping it's like a drip, drip, drip that we just so slowly see keep seeing superseding indictment after superseding indictment. One thing that I, uh, they were talking about yesterday was, um, um, I believe it's, they called it, it was the motion to suppress discovery. They're, they're limiting some of that, correct? Is that, is that it, to keep it, them from knowing what yeah. they're working on? It's a protective order. So they're seeking a protective order from the court saying, listen, we've got all this information, all of this evidence, we being the prosecutors, we need to produce it under the rules of the court we need to produce it to the defense, give them a copy of it so they can begin to prepare their defense in the case and they can investigate it. Once we indict somebody, the defense through their lawyers have a right to investigate the allegations against them. They also will need to hire ex accountants mm -hmm. to go through it, just like Cy Vance hired expert forensic mm -hmm. accountants. So, we have to, prosecutors have to give over tons and tons of information. Here's the thing, that's not public information. So what we want to avoid is having the defense start to throw stuff out into the press willy-nilly, like, oh, look, here's this little piece of discovery that we think makes us look good. Let's give it to the media. No, we want a protective order as prosecutors that we will give you everything you're entitled to under the rules and the law, but we don't want you to just be handing it out to the press. We want that material protected and preserved so we can, you know, frankly, give the defendant a fair trial and not try this in the media. Okay. Um, and one other thing we talked about a little bit, or you'd mentioned that you've been following it closely too, and I wanted to get your thoughts on this, uh, the Bill Cosby uh, oh, decision. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, a lot of us are really frustrated with this, and I, I understand the technicalities of how this was allowed to happen. And I, I, I can see that there are some people who, where do you fall at on this whole, on this whole, whole thing with Bill yeah, Cosby? I don't understand the technicalities as a 30 year prosecutor. So he, here's the first thing I will say. And this sounds um, like sour grapes or it sounds counterintuitive, but this is gospel and I'll explain why. Appellate courts don't always get it right. How can I say that? When somebody gets convicted, 
they will appeal their conviction to the first line of appellate court, and that appellate court will decide the case. Guess what? It will then go up to the next line of appellate court, whether that's the Pennsylvania, a state Supreme Court, or the U.S. Supreme Court, and that higher appellate court will sometimes reverse mm -hmm. the, the lower appellate court's ruling. What does that tell us? Appellate courts don't always get it right. Famous crusty old judge in D.C., a lie, I'm not going to spit his name out now, but he used to say in public, on the record, Glenn, appellate courts don't always get it right. They just happen to have the last word. I am still absorbing this Pennsylvania Supreme Court position uh, opinion, but I, there's a lot to dislike because, first of all, I don't believe for a minute that Bill Cosby was granted oral immunity from prosecution by by Bruce Castor. I mean, Bruce Castor, Donald the, Trump's right. I can't get clown, over that. So yes. cold clown. At least his performance, yeah. in impeachment, the sequel made him look like a stone cold clown. Yeah, no, he's okay? a joke. He's the guy. They yeah. just said, you know what, Bill, you know what? I've really enjoyed your career. You give me some laughs. Why don't you take some immunity for yourself and just go testify in that civil deposition? Travis, I've negotiated immunity deals. I've negotiated non-prosecution agreements. Do you know how how strictly they are vetted yeah. and every word of it is recorded mm -hmm. and preserved in a written agreement often offered to the court to make sure there are no misunderstandings. I'm sorry, I don't buy for a minute that Castor could have just orally off the cuff said, nah, take some immunity for yourself, Bill. So that is the first beef I have with this Supreme, with this Pennsylvania Supreme Court opinion. The other is that the judge in the case decided that these other rape victims should get to testify. Why? because there's a rule, it's called 404B, uncharged misconduct, uncharged crimes, usually can't be introduced at trial to prove the charged crime. That sounds fair, mm -hmm. right? Except if it's a signature crime. Except if the modus operandi, the method of operation, is so distinct that the judge says, you should be able to introduce these other crimes, and that's what the judge ruled, and the Pennsylvania Supreme Court didn't like that ruling. Yeah. Okay, Glenn, we've run long with you. I'm I'm getting signs from Chris that I have to break, <laughs> but you know what? Stephanie's going to have you back next week. I 100% yeah. guarantee you I to talk about this to. some more. So thank you so much for joining us today. Really, great really, talk, really talking to you guys. It. Give Stephanie my love. We'll we, do. We'll do that. Thank you very much. I mean, do we even need to do a commercial for the Step Store? I mean, the shirts are flying off the right. Look at this. Look at it. Look at that. Get your face up. Look, look. We have, and we have them for Team Pfizer, Team J and J. We are all Team Vaccine here. We have amazing, right. and you can get it on everything, right, Chris? Not just shirts. Bath mats, shower curtains. You can get it on art, a clock. You can get Duvet. a sexy bomb on a clock. We have Stephanie Miller swag. We have sexy liberal swag. And of course, all the, the vaccine shirts. Get it now. StephanieMiller.com. Wee!